My name is Wendy Robinson. I'm from Sevierville, Tennessee, and I'm a victim of criminal court corruption and family court corruption. My name is Karen Robinson, Sevierville, Tennessee, criminal court corruption and family court corruption. Well, let's start with you and just kind of, uh, you, you've heard us talking, remember to make mm -hmm. full statements. What do you want to talk about at this point? What do you want to, what do you want to put on the record? I would like to put on the record that people that are elected to do their jobs should do what they have sworn before God to do not be respecter of persons, treat all people equal, listen to the facts, and try to get to the truth, no matter what it takes. So not only um, so families, children, especially the children, that's what you know it touches us the most, but everybody, you hear so many sad, sad, pathetic stories about these little babies that get just tossed aside. They're, they don't even count. You know, you're stealing them. You're stealing their soul. You're stealing the part of their of their soul. You're killing their spirit, part of it. Just just from watching that, it's very very sad and pathetic. It should happen to nobody. No family should have to go through that, especially those babies. Nobody. And I just want people to listen and to know that this has got to be stopped in this country, and people's got to stand up and speak out against it because it's not right and nobody should have to suffer, especially those babies. Who do you think is responsible for this? I think is responsible for this is the court system. And well, like I said, the people in the court system because they listen to their political peers, the money that backs them for their campaigns, which usually the same people that have the money as the political powers. Um, because they did not listen to our family, because we weren't worthy in their sight to be listened to. It was a good old boys. And uh, the mother, I believe she has a lot to blame for that, for not protecting her son, and for not speaking up, you know, and just because she wanted to be politically correct. You know, I, have, I don't hate this person. I never hated Jason. Jason is a poor, I called him the poor lost child because he can never, he can never grow up to be the man he should have been because of what happened to him. And I asked his mother in a meeting and him also, we had a meeting with him one time. She didn't want my husband there, but Wendy and I went and I said, um, Jason, if you don't get help, do you want these boys to grow up to be like you? And he said, no. And then he said, well, I gotta go get a cigarette. So he went out and got his cigarette. Then while he was outside, I asked Leah, I said, Leah, if your son does not get the help that he needs, do you want him to grow up to be like you? And she said, no. Both of them said that, right there in that room when I asked him that question. How did it make you feel as a grandmother when you'd learned more and more of these? Uh... It was it was pathetic. You had to drop this little child off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When when I learned that this was going on at visitations, we knew every time we had to drop these children off, especially Ethan. The other ones were smaller, especially the oldest one. He would scream, "No, Mom, I don't want to go." He would scream, didn't want to go inside that house. We literally had to pick him up sometimes in order to take him to the door. And he didn't run to his mamma, or he didn't run to his daddy. We knew something was wrong there because, you know, if he was so happy to see your mamma and your, and your daddy, you'd run right to him. Well, usually she had another cousin there or something. And to kind of be a decoy, I, that's the way I looked at it. And she would say, well, look who's here. Mm -hmm. And he would run to that person. He would not run to the dad or to the mamma. And it was get, getting worse and worse and more sad all the time. We just cried after we had to drop him off because, you know, I mean, why should you have to put him through that? Because the court tells you to. If you'll be in contempt of court, if you don't do this, forget about him, what he, what he's experiencing in that house. 
you know. And that's why we kept notes. We kept notes of every visit. We have a journal of every visit, what went on and how we were feeling. What, uh, what caused you and your husband to feel like you had to sit up and stand guard at their house? What, what brought that on initially? Well, because of him, of, uh, we felt that we had to, I had to stay there uh, at her house because at first she had the baby, she had cesarean, she needed help. So I started to stay there. And then um, um, after she had foreclosed on them, we had bought her a uh, double wide and put on our property for her and the children. And um, like I said, it was out in the country. We didn't know what they were capable of or he was capable of because he was just crazy sometimes where he would scream and holler and rant and rave. He threatened to kill I don't know how many people. and. Um, even his own mother and stepfather, he threatened to kill them. And of course, they denied that. They said, well, he's never said an unkind word to him, to them. But that's not true, because I've heard him. I wouldn't know the way he talked about them. Well, we have it documented. Well, I, myself, my own personal conversations with him when they were first married. You know, we, I could see there was some little bit of good somewhere inside him. You know, I told him, I said, Jason, we love you. And he says, I don't love anybody. I don't trust anybody. And it was so sad. And um, then when he threatened to split my husband's head open with a ball bat and pack it full of sand, you know, if he, and the way he treated her, the, the verbal abuse, the screaming and the yelling, then when they moved out on the double wide on our property, which was down over the hill from us, uh, yeah, I stayed there too at night because I knew you never knew what somebody like that was going to do. I, we was all scared of him, afraid of him. Didn't know if he was going to come over the hill with a ga can of gasoline, or with a gun, or with whatever. And my husband would watch and listen, see if his truck was coming up at night, sit out in the yard. So he would he would stand the uh, the point. Right, but he would stand the point exactly in the yard and watch over and watch over all of us because he didn't know even when I was down there what he would come up in there and, and sneak up when we were asleep. And you can't stay awake twenty four hours. No, then you even don't though sleep. he tried, you know. Yeah. When and how did you learn that uh, your son in law had been shot? I was down at Wendy's that night that she got a call from uh, from her friend Sharon, and I didn't believe it was him. I learned that he had been shot that night. Um, same way Wendy did. She woke me up and told me, and I really didn't believe it was true. Cause well, and then I didn't even even imagine my husband would have done it because he had been seeing other women. He had, you know, with his sexual tendencies toward men, women, or whatever, or drugs. I figured it's a drug dealer, a drug deal gone bad, because he had been involved in a lot of that. And um, that's what we all thought at first. And then I didn't realize, I, my husband didn't even tell me. I didn't, because he, I just really didn't think he did it until we was in, a, like I said, we was in the attorney's office. He told me. And why. Let me ask you to say that again. When did you learn, uh, when were you told that your husband did? I was told that my husband did it. He told me actually in the attorney's office also because I didn't believe he had done it because Jason was involved in so many other activities. He was seeing married women. He was um, drug doing drugs. You know, I figured it was a drug dealer, drug deal gone bad or something like that. So I truly thought that. What did you think when you learned? When he told me why and, and what happened with the walk and everything, I was shocked, but I, w I understood. And uh, it's just sad, it's pathetic that it had to go that far. It really is, it's just not right. That somebody, that you have to do that when nobody would listen to you in the courts. And, and it, like you said, it could all, all been prevented. All been prevented. Have you supported him all the way? Amen, yes sir. 
I've supported him all the way. Yes, sir. Will, to the day I die. Because I know what kind of person he is. What's the reaction been of your friends and peers? Our true friends and peers? Awesome. They all support him. They all support him. The reaction has been great from my friends and peers. True friends, you know, like the people here tonight, just awesome. And how's your husband doing in prison? He's, he's not going to let him see him sweat, which that's, <laughs> but he's doing the best he can. It breaks in his heart from being away from these, the boys. He cries just from being away from them. And uh, he said he didn't think he was going to be as rough as it was because he's, I guess he's older. And uh, um, he said the, just, the he's, boys have softened his heart. Yeah. He's not tough anymore. Right. He can't, you know, you just can't be hard hearted and put him out of your mind and just go on. He says you can't, he can't do that. And just, he says it's like living in a sea of puke, you know. Uh, because of the language and, uh, and the stuff that goes on in there. You know, he has to just, day by day, that's what we do, day by day. And we know that God does do pr produce miracles. I was told by someone that God can't open prison doors, but I know better than that. He has in the past, and I know he'll do it again. It's very hard to leave him there for me. You know, you... It's hard to leave him, and the kids don't really know. The older one, he knows more. But, uh, you know, they just think it's the VA, because my dad loves the VA, you know, the hospital, and so they think that's the VA. It's a big building, and actually the guards there, they really help us with that, you know. They make the searches fun for the kids. There's a lot of, of good ones. There's a lot, there's of, a lot good of good people there. there, and there's a lot of not so good people there. But, but luckily, you know, for the situation being what it is, it's you know we got the good ones to help us out. So he knows it's going to be rough filing the uh, post conviction post, post, post conviction relief because you have to go through a lot. You have to come, you know, and we don't have an attorney. Um, we need an attorney, one that will be willing to fight the right way. And uh, if anybody's out there, come forward. <laughs> but um, we know something will happen. It will happen God's way, not our way. How does this impact you when you think about your daughter? It's very hard. It's very hard because I know what she's, I can't relate to what she's going through. I can only imagine. And, uh, It's, it's hard, but I know I have to stay strong for her and for my husband and for those babies, you know. Um, as a mother, I understand where she, I can understand where she, and uh, they need their dad, I mean their pa. And she needs your dad. <laughs> what should be changed? What should be done differently? What could, what would you hope other people might get from this? I just want other people to stand up and speak out and be aware. Don't judge people by what you read in the newspapers or by what you see. You know, um, ask questions. Be concerned and care about people. Ask questions. What can I do to help you? Or is this, you know, what's going on? Um, definitely do not believe what you read. 
in the papers, because most of them anymore are so politically correct that they don't tell the truth. We've gone to our local Mountain Press, to the editor himself, after this was all over, and asked why they never wanted to hear our side. The only answer I got from the reporter was, well, the other family came to us. And I says, well, wouldn't you think you'd like to hear both sides of the story? If you're a true reporter, wouldn't you want to hear both sides of the story? Uh, well, they just come to us first. And now at the end, at the, at the final uh, uh, plea agreement plea hearing, agreement hearing uh, he came up to us and wanted a statement. And I says, well, isn't it a little bit too late? You never cared before about the truth. How come you want the truth now? And uh, one of the uh, bailiffs came up and actually hugged us all. And um, my daughter-in-law spoke up and said, did you get a picture of that bailiff hugging my mother-in-law there? You know, you went over there and took a picture of the other family. How come you didn't get a picture of that bailiff hugging my mother-in-law? You know, and of course they had no answers. They were, he was just doing what probably his boss would think it was the correct thing to do. And um, just uh, other people start caring again about what's going on in this country and in, this, in your own backyard. And just because somebody has the right last name don't make, doesn't make them right. Excuse me for doing more than one thing at once here, but to keep the program moving, I've got to. Um, what else would you like to talk about that we haven't talked about? Any other points you would like to make or emphasize that when you make? There's so much, even little stuff that, you know, happened that you can't really tell everything, but. My main thing is the children. Just protect our children. Let's all protect our children. Um, I just Don't wanna... be afraid to stand up and protect your children. Bad things happen when good people do nothing. And we're glad that Lawless America at least is out there doing something. And I just want to say that, um, well, the same thing she said, obviously. I've said that before about the kids need to be number one priority but right now um, my husband is still being portrayed as a war hero you know I mean the paper the mother his mother has said that he retired from the Marine Corps and then somebody made a comment on the article saying was he 10 when he went in because you got to be in there 30 years you know to retire so it's the lies um, I mean, people can lie and you can brush it off as lies, but these are impacting my children's lives. They're, they're gonna, you know, I want the truth. The truth is important to me. And every time I have to drive by that thing, that monument they've placed outside the church, that I'm sure they just wrote a check for and they put one up, uh, it, that's not right. You know, I want people to know the truth. I mean, he's not a war hero at all. He uh, should not have even gone to Iraq. I have documents that prove that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's the, it's almost like she's trying to sway a jury pool by the, uh, using the, the building there, the church building, the, the one main big church in town, and of course people go there, so to me that's sort of, it, it's, it's just planting a seed that's not of lies. You know, I want that stopped. So they've erected like a war yes. memorial to it? No, them? well, it's it's like a granite. Uh, they have erected like a granite. It's not a war memorial. It's just like a big granite, um, almost like what you see in a, a grave, the, the elaborate, you know, and it mm -hmm. just says in loving memory of Corporal James J. Hicks. And it's just not appropriate. Um, you know, it's not appropriate at all. And yeah, here, I, here lies a sexual predator, a, uh, a deviant. He's a broken kid. 
yeah. is who lies there. It's yeah. a broken kid. Lost child. You know, that's who lies there. Mm -hmm. So, again, she's using him even in death for her right. own attention, her own, I'm the victim, you know, uh, everybody to show her. It's for her. And Get sympathy. You know, her Pity. gut's got to be rotted from the, you know, from the, what she's inside, what's going on in there. Because I don't know how anybody can, you know, I mean, she was abused by her husband. And, and that's another thing is she's even using the, uh, the little newsletters that you get from the church. Because I still get them so I can see what's going on. And, you know, she'll put, you know, in loving memory of Dr. Roy Wayne Hicks, loving father. He wasn't a loving father. That's the reality. You know, focus on the doctor part. You know, focus on that was what she's trying to do. And, uh, you know, um, my kids, my children's birthday, she'll put in honor of their birthday. Well, that just runs all over me. But I just, it just needs to stop. And those are side things. It's little things. You know, I that that just, that just keep digging. poke you in your side. But it's just, you know, I want my name and my children's names to be Robinson. Not, I don't want anything to do with Hicks. I think that's obvious to anybody why. We're not, that's not a legacy that I want to uphold. And I, I do also uh, keep a picture of him when he was about five. So cute. That's who I grieve for. And that's what really makes me sad. And I talked to that picture a long time ago and I told him, these little boys will have the life that you should have had. They're gonna catch frogs and fish and, you know, what happened to them? But that's who I talked to and that's who I grieve for is the child he once was. So, you know, the comments that the family makes and they put LOL at the end, I can't even understand that. There's nothing funny about nothing here. Nothing funny about it. What are your hopes for the movie? go worldwide and wake people up. I, my hopes for the movie is to go. All right, let's start with Yeah, movie. because we can't. We don't be laughing. No. I know. My hopes for the movie is that it goes worldwide. Because this happens all over the world. I'm sure it does. I mean, I know it does. Look at these poor, poor children in Africa and all these foreign countries where they, you know, suffer, get their arms cut off. and Just go worldwide. Let people become aware. Pay attention and care. Care about the children. Care about abuse. Women, children, families. Pay attention and wake up. And not only that, but you're going to do other segments on other different departments, I know, but, but that people just stop the corruption in this country and in this worldwide. Yeah, people need to realize that what you take with you when you die is really what you leave behind your character who you are as a person and you can't take all that money in there it's not gonna do you any good you know and just every time I see these commercials about the abused animals I always put children's pictures in place of the animals pictures and the words I always think of children there's nothing like that for children yeah why you know, I love animals, but children are more important than animals. And children are treated like animals, and there's not big elaborate commercials that go on for three minutes about child abuse. Nothing like that. You know? And, you know, my hope for the movie is that people are touched by it, they listen to what it has to say, the message. and they learn to stand up for we are the pe we the people we're that we're this country we're the ones who need to make changes you know not sit back and <laughs> not vote or not expect things to you have to speak out you know you the ones that are supposed to run the country not not just let it run us over and if everybody would get out and vote and change change and vote for the right people there's still some good ones out there let's get them in you know, take our position as Americans seriously in this country. You know, realize what a gift we have been given to vote, to 
be able to raise our children to do the things that other children in other countries can't do, you know? You know, fight for prayer back in schools. Fight for what our country's founded on. Fight for a president that will salute the flag. You know? Justice for all. Justice for all. Fight for a first lady that won't make fun of the flag. You know, right. I, want, I want the Red Skelton, you know, he had a wonderful... I have it. I play it all the time. He, he was talking to a little classroom of children. You know, it's a very powerful message when you listen to it. You know, play that in schools. You know, maybe try to raise awareness through cartoons or things that could help children to understand better than everything that they watch showing violence, you know? And not be afraid to speak up when they are hurt. You know, just... Induced. Have parents realize what it is to be a parent. I mean, you got to spend time with your children, eat dinner together, you know, talk to them. Don't put them in front of a TV or a computer and let that raise them. And that's where they can get, you know, they're vulnerable to be victimized in that way. They need to know that you love them. And the public officials take their oaths seriously. Remember what they said when they took their oaths. I think they swore before God. To take their oath and to, and to be, have liberty and justice for all, not be respecters of persons, because they have to do their job. That's what they're voted in for, to do their job, not to be respecters of persons just because you've got a certain last name or you have money or you're politically correct. All right, any uh, last words before we uh, call it a morning? God have mercy on us all. I just, truth, just truth. <laughs> Truth and love. And I need each of you to sign and print your name if you're willing to give me permission to use your name, your face, <laughs> your likeness, your recording. You think we're going to get sued? <laughs> Probably. I won't put anything in that will get you sued. Will no, I no, sued? I mean, no, no, I'm asking your opinion. Do well, you think we will from by these people that we're talking about is what I'm saying. Uh, well, I don't know except for Hannaway. Well, he deserves to. I mean, let him try it. What's he going to say? Yeah. The only thing we said about Hannaway is what he said in that report. Just I didn't, the truth. I didn't say the other thing. I didn't say my suspicions. <laughs> I have to put this last name because it's my legal name, so... Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I was worried because the report was supposed to be sealed. Then it's all over the newspaper. So I'm like, well. <sighs> so many little things that she did. She actually canceled their, her health insurance. After he died, called because it was a neighbor. Yeah, yeah, she's the one that went down and got all the death certificates and everything. husband come home that's what I want <laughs> we'll do that again in a second okay. <clears throat> all right so you both agree we can use your name and face and all that good stuff hey, every movie has to do it so go ahead and sign it when you see these when you see a movie or a TV show and they have somebody's face mm -hmm. obliterated out that, oh yeah that's because yeah. they probably uh, well that's what shocked me about her putting my children's pictures on the local news. I mean, to me, you watch Biggest Loser, they black out their yeah. stuff on their t-shirts and stuff. So I was shocked that, that she would even think of it again. That was you uh, using them. Yeah, that's... You know? Some people's minds don't work right. No. Well, I tell you, it's a uh, incredible situation that I can't imagine 
normal people wouldn't be sympathetic to you and see your father as a hero. I know that was the response on her. Well, your, the petition, since you posted it, it's helped a lot. So thank you for doing that. So, uh, Dale, one thing about it, they're not treating normal people as when you're normal. <laughs> you know, normal has changed. That it has, hasn't it? You know what, I, want, I wonder, just your thoughts. I can't help but keep going back to, shouldn't there be some kind of charges against his mother for withholding evidence in Ethan's case? Having prior knowledge of all this stuff and not speaking out, isn't that, wouldn't that be withholding evidence? Not really. It's, well, they it, probably look at it. Only if there was a trial going right. on or something where in that case it, she hid it or something. So it's just really a moral thing. It's a moral. It's a moral thing. thing. Yeah. All right. Let me. Yeah. Uh, let me get mine here. Now we're going to do what we did back in the beginning with your sweet daughter. Look directly in the camera. Mm-hmm. 